हेलो गुड इवनिंग राठौड़ सर गुड इवनिंग सर गुड इवनिंग तो वी हैव फनी एंड शोएब आल्सो जॉइनिंग फनी यू हैव द प्रेजेंटेशन राइट यू आर प्रेजेंटिंग यस यस आई हैव ओके आई डोंट थिंक द लेटेस्ट वन इज Should should we start, Professor Rathod? Rathod sir, can we start? Yes sir, yes sir. I think we should start. Okay, so, thanks. So, yeah, go ahead. Uh, sure. I should share the access to with whom? Sure. Funny, funny, funny. Funny, funny, funny. Okay. Sure. Yes. yes. All right. Funny, you can share your screen. Yeah, Prak. So, good evening, everyone. So, I'm pleased to invite again our JPMC team. All are there. Parag sir is there. I'm happy to see everyone here back. Parag sir is there. So, he's there. Hari Singh is also there. And Funny Krishna is there. So, thank you very much for joining back again for this evening session. Over to you, sir. Uh, thanks, uh, Rathod, sir. So, thank it's good to be uh, joining again in this uh, ultimate session. Uh, and uh, thanks uh, sir, for providing us this opportunity again. So today we will be talking more about machine learning and how we've uh, and actually not talking much about what machine learn learning is all about in detail, but more into how we have. Uh, 
uh, adopted machine learning and implemented some of the case studies that we want you to uh, have a look. Um, so, uh, Fani Krishna uh, is uh, from my team and uh, we've been working closely on the intelligent automation journey and uh, he's an expert on machine learning and data science uh, and uh, with a great amount of experience on implementing some live uh, use cases. Uh, so, I would like uh, Fani to take over and uh, walk us through uh, basics and then dwell more into. Uh, so the way we have designed this is more uh, focused on examples and uh, actual live use, use cases that will help correlate, help you correlate with uh, the subject a little more. Uh, what do you funny? Yep. Thanks, Parag. So good evening, everyone. So in this session, like we'll talk about uh, worry of AML, then how we implemented AML in JP Morgan, and I'll show you a few use cases also. Then followed by the different types of machine learning we have, and then we try to build few models, or we'll try to train few models on the publicly available data sets. Then we will discuss about the universal workflow of the machine learning. Yeah. So. So just I will start with the worry of what is artificial intelligence. So which is born in 1950 and where people started thinking whether computers could be made to think. So what happens by providing the thinking ability to the machines, right? So we can automate the intellectual task performed by the humans. So this is the idea behind implementing the AI here. Then AI has many branches here. So machine learning is a one of the branch. So uh, then the classical example, right? The early chess programs we used to play on uh, Windows 95 or Windows XP, right? Where there are whether the where there are some rules, those are programmed or hard coded. So they are they are hard coded to achieve some answers, which is shown in the figure here above. So the classical programming it will take rules and data as input and it will output the answers here. So we call this process as a symbolic AI, which is very different from the machine learning. So machine learning comes into picture where it is something where we have both data and the answers, and we try to identify the rules using both the data and answers. So we can say machine learning is something which explains us how the data and the answers are related. So once it once the machine learns the rules or patterns, it can apply the same rules on the unseen data or test data and it can make the predictions. Also, please feel free to stop me if you have any questions. Right. So here, so we are saying machines can learn to the first statement in the slide, right? It covers all the three forms of machine learning. So when we say we can teach machines how to learn, so this statement is applicable to the supervised machine learning. And when we say some machines can learn by themselves. So this statement is applicable for the unsupervised machine learning and reinforcement machine learning. And the second statement is saying the machines can predict the future as long as the future doesn't look too different from the past. So which means once we build the model on the training data, right? So we can apply the same rules on some test data and make some predictions. But if the test data or the new data, if it looks totally different from the training data, so the machine learning cannot perform well. So we will get the very low accuracy. Right. So here we'll go with the applications of machine learning in different fields, starting from the banking and finance to biology. So the first one, which is in the top of the list, is automated payment processing. This is what we have implemented in JP Morgan Chase, which, which I will explain you in some time. And then the second second point, the predicting the fraudulent activity on a credit card. This is a well-known use case where we need to identify the fraudulent activities on the credit card transactions. So this is a good example for the anomaly detection. Also, we can implement the machine learning in the healthcare domain where uh, we can we can predict what kind of disease based on the patient's vitals. 
and then we can suggest the same to the doctor, which helps the doctors to advise a further treatment or medication. And we can implement the machine learning in e-commerce where we can suggest the new products to the customers based on his past shopping history. So also here Netflix is a great example for this in this domain where the Netflix suggests us about the new movies based on our past viewing history. So this we call it as a recommendation systems. So machine learning uh, people started using biology recently where they are trying to find the patterns of the particular cancers. So this reminds me of an example like uh, recently there is a company called CVS Health. They have started a program on inviting the researchers to help them to identify the subtype of a specific cancer. So they have started this competition with a breast cancer where they are asking the researchers to identify the type of breast cancer it is, whether it is HER2 positive or negative or triple negative. So what happens by implementing this machine learning model in the biology? So they can replace a famous test called a fish test. So fish test is something which is done based on the protein levels in the cancerous cells. So they are trying to replace this in the biology. And then, yeah. This is an example where we can implement the machine learning in the social media. So I have collected this picture from the data set provided by the Facebook. So Facebook recently they, they are hosting a competition in the driven data where they, are, they want to identify the hate speech from the uh, social media posts. So this is how Facebook uh, defines the hate speech. So if anyone comparing the humans with animals, they call it as hate speech or if there is any discrimination done on people based on the gender, color or religion or immigration status. So they consider it as a hate speech. If you see the bottom line in this picture, right? So here they are comparing a human with a monkey. So this is considered as a hate speech. I mean, people are spreading hate speech using this type of post on the social network. So now the Facebook is trying to implement a supervised machine learning model. In the training data, they will give us this picture and the statement which is on the top and bottom of the same picture. And they will label this particular picture and, and the statement as a um, hate speech. So this is going to be a binary classification problem. Hate speech, yes or no. So where we need to work with the two types of data, one is the image and second one is uh, uh, the statement which is present on the image. And we need to identify the this comes under the hate speech or not. So here we will start with few use cases which we have implemented in JP Morgan. The first one is a collateral monitoring. So um, this is a use case where we are dealing with the text data with a large amount of text data and the objective of this use case is to classify the text the proposal text into actionable or non-actionable. So, so if you see, we have only two classes, actionable and non-actionable. So this is going to be a binary classification problem, right? So coming to the data, right? So we need to train the model on a text called a proposal text. Proposal is nothing but when an underwriter, we have a team of underwriters who will go to the customers and gather their requirements, document the same requirements, and dump them into our system. And then the same requirements uh, entered by underwriter will be received by another team called middle office team. Now middle office team has to go through each and every proposal and they need to identify whether this proposal is actionable or non-actionable. So when I say proposal is actionable, we may need to create a new loan or or we or the customer want to have additional collateral on the existing loan or he may want to close the loan. So there are different types of requirements from the customer and we and the middle of his team has to categorize them into actionable or non actionable. So when a proposal becomes actionable, the same proposal will be transferred to a new team. For example, uh, there is a proposal from a customer asking to create a new loan. So this will become the actionable and the same ticket will be transferred to a new team where the team will take care of creating a new loan. Right. So like this middle office team 
has to go through around 550 proposals on each and every day. So each proposal will have a huge text. So they are spending a good amount of time, almost like they are not able to finish the 550 proposals within a given day. So that is the reason we have implemented a machine learning solution here. Yeah. So this slide, it will explain, it will show you some examples of the actionable tickets and non-actionable tickets. So these words which are highlighted, right? Annual review, new advice lines. These comes as part of the new loan. Remediation, ARC, or next review date. So these comes as part of the non-actionable tickets. So, so actually these words highlighted, right? These are the keywords used by the middle office team to identify actionable and non-actionable item. But this information is not sufficient for a machine learning model. So what we need, right? Then here we comes to the data preparation phase where we have collected the historical data to train a machine learning model. So totally we have 32,000 proposal text. Out of 32,000 records, we have 26,000 records as non-actionable records and 6,000 records as actionable records. And the training data looks like this. Assume this is something like a spreadsheet. In one column, you will have the proposal text. And this is the text. And in the second column, whether this this particular proposal is actionable or not. Right. Right. Yeah. So now, uh, after collecting the training data, right, we have reached at a point where we have the training data ready, but we need to identify the right algorithm to train the model. So before we choose the model, right, we have few points to consider. I'll go back to the previous slide ones. So here, if you see, the there are 26,000 non-actionable records and 6,000 actionable records. If you see, the, there is a data imbalance between these two categories. So a, a statistical model, something like a Bayesian classifier or something, which highly depends on the data distribution, does not help here because this data is highly imbalanced. Right, so that is the reason we we search for a algorithm which can handle both data imbalance issue as well as which can deal with the nonlinear separation boundary between these two classes. Then we try different algorithms and two a uh, two type of algorithm which helped us is the support vector machines and second one is the tree based models. So there in the tree based models we have multiple types of sub models again we have the random forest and then we have the binary tree then we have the extreme gradient boosting so this is the extreme gradient boosting algorithm which we have choose uh, to train uh, to train the uh, to train the model here so if you see the extreme gradient boosting right so what it do first it will fit the model on the data then it will go to the observations which were classified wrongly then again it will add a different weightage to the wrongly classified observations and it will run the model again so they, these are the few hyperparameters which we need to tune so to get the right accuracy so eta is a learning rate here and evaluation matrix okay right this is a classification so it is going to be i mean the evaluation metric is going to the error rate so we need to get the lowest error rate and also the objective is a binary logistic because we have only two outputs, either actionable or non-actionable. Right. <clears throat> so this model, which, which was trained on the extreme gradient boosting, it provided us an accuracy of 92% on the unseen data. So generally to evaluate any model, so we follow uh, we follow different methodologies. So the one we have chosen is k-fold cross-validation, uh, where k equal 10. I will explain you what is this. So we will split the data, 32,000 records, into 10 pieces. So each set will contain 3,200 records. And then we'll train the model on the nine sets of data and test it on the remaining set. Like this, we will repeat the same model evaluation for the 10 times. Then we'll take an average of the best, uh, uh, best, uh, what, what I can say, best iteration 
at what iteration and with uh, which hyperparameters the model is really doing well. And then these are the some important predictors. Hope you are able to see. I will tell you like uh, so the first one review S. This predictor has a highest importance. So what this means is if the word review exists in any of the proposal. So there is a chance that the model is able to classify the particular proposal as actionable or non actionable. So here this graph is saying review is a highly important predictor. As these graph is showing the highest importance for a few of these keywords, right, which we have recorded as part of hypothesis. So these results are in favor of our hypothesis. So we uh, deployed this model to the production. Yeah, this is a second use case which we have developed recently the money movement entity extraction. Okay, before we we start with this use case, right? I would like to uh, give you a small example on what is the named entity recognition which we have added here the space in here or named entity recognition so i will open my jupyter notebook yeah right let's say if you have some text like this so i have can, can you can, like, like, can you please maximize them uh or i think i can't this because this is a google chrome right no, you can't expand that window. It's too long. Is it okay? Yeah, better, 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 better. much better. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. No. So here, what I have written as a text is: Mark use Google search engine, use Apple MacBook. Mark is from United States of America. Let's say if I want to identify the organizations in this particular sentence, so Google and Apple should come as organizations and mark is a person right and united states of america is a geographical location so this we call it as entity recognition this is a type of classification so we have a famous algorithm called spacey which will do the work for us i will execute this here i am printing the here you can see the model has identified the spacey model has identified the word Google as an organization and Apple organization mark as person and United States of America as geographical position entity GPE. So we need to implement the similar similar logic in a we need to implement the similar logic in a use case within the bank. But the problem is here, if you see, here we have used the English Core Web Simple model, which is a pre-trained model provided by the Spacey. So generally, these companies train the models on the open open corpus, something like a Wikipedia. That is the reason they are able to identify Mark as a person and Google as an organization. But our case, which we are trying to develop in the bank, is completely different. I'll go back to the use case here. So we have a similar use case where the use case is to identify the entities from the wire transfer instructions. So wire transfer instructions are nothing but one person ask you to uh, one person ask the bank people to transfer the money from his account to a different account. I have an example here. Yeah. So this is one of the example. So where they are asking the JP Morgan team to debit his account, which is in the which is hidden in the amount of this particular dollars and credit to a different account at a different bank. So now here we what we need to identify. We need to identify the person who is in. Uh, we need to identify the account. Of the person. From which we need to debit the amount and we need to identify the beneficiary account number and the beneficiary account name. So this slide has the same list of details, so we need to Identify the value date on which day the transaction should happen. What is the amount? It's around two thousand three hundred dollars. But from account number to account number, which is nothing but the beneficiary account number, and the two account name, which is nothing but the beneficiary account name. 
what happens by implementing this uh, model or by training this model we can identify these entities from the incoming emails and automatically we can dump these details into a system where the other team they can make the payments right so this complete exercise right it will avoid a lot of human activities here otherwise we should have a person who goes through the, all the email and identify value date amount from account number all these five details and enter into a different system then another team go through the same uh, same form and then they need to update another system so by implementing this machine learning model so we can uh, we can avoid all this exercise So this is a validation graphs which shows how these model how the spacing model is working here. <clears throat> One second. Yeah. So these are the validation metrics captured based on the model's performance on unseen data. Let's say I have trained my model on some thousand or two thousand wire instructions. So tomorrow there is another wire instructions coming in and I need to test my model on that. So, and we have chosen the F1 as a evaluation metric because F1 is very robust and it will explain us how, how the model is performing on the unseen data, right? So the a graph, which is on the left side, right? It explains the overall model performance, the overall precision, overall recall, and the F1 score. Of course, F1 score is a, uh, it's a combination of precision and recall. And if you see a uh, graph, which is on the right hand side, right? So this graph talks about the F1 score of the individual uh, individual entities. How the, uh, let's say, uh, if you see the line in purple, line in purple, uh, it denotes a two account name. So the model is still need some improvement to identify the two account name, which is nothing but the beneficiary account name. So what we can do, we can provide the additional training data to the model and then train the model to identify and, and to get the good accuracy, good F1 score on the two account name here. So any questions still here? Okay, I will take it as no and move forward. All right. So coming back to our technical discussion, right? So, <clears throat> so in this section, like we'll discuss about the types of machine learning and we'll build some models using the open source data sets. But before that, we'll discuss how the machine learns. So the answer is simple, like the machine learns by finding the patterns in the training data. So that is the reason it is always important to have good training data. So you can ask me like, how, what is the measure of good training data? So I can say like a good training data is something which contains all the possible patterns, all the possible patterns for the machine to learn. So I will try to give you an example of a bad training data, then a good training data. So if we have a bad training data, right? Suppose uh, we are trying to build a model for a online shopping website where we have collected the sales data for October to December of a particular year. And then we train the model on the three months data. If you see October to December, this is the winter data. And then if I try to predict the sales of a, sum, of a month in summer, like May or June, the model which I have trained on the winter data doesn't perform well on the summer data because the woolen sweaters may have high demand, hence the highest sales in the winter, but not in the summer. So if I train the model on the winter data and try to make predictions on the summer data, right? So that my predictions will go completely wrong. So in this case, a good training data for this case is, it should contain samples from the all, all seasons of any year, rainy, summer, winter, everything. And also it should contain the data for all subtypes, not only for the willing clothes, it should contain a formal schedules. 
for the different different accessories. I should have sufficient data as well as the data which contains all the patterns for the machine to learn. So this is how we define the good training data and this is how the machine learns. Right. So this diagram, uh, it gives us a overview about the, the three types of machine learning. So the first one is supervised where we have the outcome target or, or the data is labeled in the training data. So for example, the collateral monitoring use case, which we have seen some time back, right? So this is a, that is a good example of supervised learning. So unsupervised learning here, we do not have any labels for the model. So hence the model try, try to find the patterns and try to group the similar data together. I'll show you this with an example here and coming to the reinforcement learning. So this is the third type of machine learning where the machine learns by its own. So it works on the uh, rewarding system. So once the machine takes the right decision, it will get a reward. If the machine takes a wrong step, it will get penalized. So by doing it repeatedly, the machine will learn the patterns which which will give the highest rewards. So that is all about the reinforcement learning here. Right. So this image explains what are the different type of use cases we can solve using the supervised learning and supervised learning everything and the reinforcement. If you see the supervised learning here, we have the identity and fraud detection as well as image classification, diagnostics, everything. And anyway, in the next slide, I will explain you the subtypes of supervised machine learning and unsupervised machine learning also. And coming to the unsupervised machine learning, the, it has the recommend, recommended systems. This is how the Netflix will work. Right. So we'll start with the supervised machine learning here. And after each and every slide, uh, sorry, after discussing the type of machine learning we'll go jump into the jupyter lab and we'll build a model for this so when we call the any machine learning method as supervised machine learning right so this is when we train the model on the label data so we can solve the two types of problems using the supervised machine learning one is the regression so in the regression problems, we try to predict a continuous variable value. So the output or the outcome could be any value from zero to infinity. So I will quickly show you a Jupyter notebook here. House prices. See, in this uh, particular house price, Boston house price use case, right? We have to predict the sale price of a home using the uh, different other predictors here. And if you see the maximum and minimum is from 34,900 to a huge value. So there is, so the value is continuous. It could be at any level of precision. So if we are trying to solve this type of problems, we need to choose the regression methodologies here, right? Similarly, we have another type of uh, problem where which we call it as a classification problem, right? where we need to categorize the data into one of the predefined categories. So I'll show you this one also. So this is a famous data set, which we call it as IMDB. So this IMDB data set contains the movie reviews. Sorry. So here we have a review, which is again, which is a text of huge length and it has a sentiment whether the movie review is positive or negative. As we have only two classes under sentiment, we call it as a binary classification problem. Right. I'll show you this. Just I'm printing this. Here we are printing some review 
and then which is labeled as a negative review. And when you see the value counts from this, how many positive sentiments and how many negative sentiments we have in the data set. So this, this data set is uh, equally distributed or equally balanced. So we have 25,000 positive reviews and 25,000 negative reviews. And even before the uh, proceeding with the use case, right, I have to tell you like I'm using the TensorFlow, which is a deep learning library for this. So Tensor and Keras is an API built on top of the TensorFlow, which which gives us an easy easy ways to deal with the huge text. So using the TensorFlow, you can work with the text, you can work with the images because uh, no machine learning models can directly work with the words. So we so we need a way to convert the uh, words into numbers or vectors or tensors. Right. So the one first one which I'm importing is a tokenizer, which splits the data into words. You see above, we have a huge review. So this review will be a tokenized into words. So this will become a word show was, they will become a different, different words here. And then we have something called patch sequence because uh, the TensorFlow works. I mean, the TensorFlow needs the input should be of the same size. So hence uh, here we have defined maximum length. If there is any movie review, whose length is less than some 300 words. We'll pad it with the remaining zeros. Just I'm inputting them. So this first step is tokenizing. This tokenize the data. And then second one is up converting the tokens into the sequences here. I will try to print. This is loading. So if you see the movie review, which I'll print this one also. The movie review, this large amount of text is converted into numbers. See, if you see after the success of Die Hard, right? So we have different numbers, 100, 1, 1, 0, 0, 7, 4, 7, 25. So what we did, like we have divided the review into words and assigned a number for each and every, each and every word. If here I will show you how to get the word out of the out of the numbers again. Sorry. See here I'm printing again the words with the value 100, 1, 1, 0, 0, 7 after the success of Die Hard, which we have here in the first four or five places. Then, now we have the label data as a strings, like we have the positive review and negative review. Any machine learning model cannot work with the words. So we need to convert these words into numbers. Let's say, Positive review. I mean, we need to assign zero as a positive review, one as a negative review, or vice versa. So, we have a uh, method in the scikit-learn which we call it as label encoder. So, from the movie reviews data set using the sentiment values which contains the strings positive and negative, we are encoding them as zeros and ones. And just I'm printing the unique values. So if you see zero on one, both both are 25,000, 25,000 long. So now zero stands for positive review and one stands for the negative review. Then what I'm doing, so I have totally 50,000 records in the data, but I don't have any data to validate my model. So in this section, I'm splitting the data into training and testing sections. So again, we we are going to use a train test split, the method provided by the scikit-learn, where we can assign 75% of the data for the training and 25% of the data for the testing. Similarly for the labels, we see the labels has zeros and ones. So the data is divided. Now, 
now we need to start building a model again here we are using the tensorflow and we are creating a deep learning network using the an and artificial neural networks which will be quite interesting here so this is how we'll define the model and second one is the embedding right so embedding in a sense what to do so deep learning projects the data into a very higher dimensions so here i'm projecting the data into 64 dimensional space let's say i have the word uh, with the index 100 above after the after the success of die hard so right so the word after is assigned with a number 100 right but i cannot directly work with the number what i do i need to project this word into a higher dimensions so i will show you how the vector looks for this then let's say if you have a review with a 300 words each word will be assigned with a 64 dimension vector so you can say you can imagine this as an array of 64 numbers 64 floating point numbers like this we have defined the 300 as a maximum length of any review so we will get 300 364 dimension vectors which will be later compressed into a 32 dimension vector using the LSTM layer. Right. So then I'm adding some dense layers and finally the final layer contains the activation of sigmoid. Okay. Here I am using the sigmoid because I need my output to be between 0 and 1 because we have defined 0 as a negative review, 1 as a positive review. So the output should be between 0 and 1. And this model will give you the probability. That is what the use of sigmoid layer. Right. So once the network is built, right, I need to compile my model. I think this is not built. So here I'm compiling my model. And then I am fitting the model on the 75% of the training data for 10 iterations with and one batch will contains 72 samples because totally I have 50,000 records out of 50,000. So 25% we left for the testing. So the remaining 75% will get around 39,000 records. So we can't process everything at a time. So they consume a lot of memory. So we cannot train the model on the 39,000 records at a time. So we are going batches by batches. And at the same time, after every iteration, I'm going to test my model performance on the test set here. So this will take some time. And if you see that we have defined the loss as a binary cross entropy. So in any machine learning, the accuracy, which is changing the extreme rate, it should go up and the loss should come down. So if you see the, the loss is coming down and the accuracy is now 77%. Parag, shall we wait till it completes this execution? I think yeah, it's taking some time. Give a second, <coughs> couple of minutes. It's okay, yeah. no, don't worry. In the meanwhile, if anyone has questions, right, they can raise those questions and right, yeah. you can try and answer. So anyway, this is uh, uh, going to be a little deep uh, because uh, I think the team here on this call, right, have gone through rigorous machine learning course over the uh, uh, last few days, uh, more than mm -hmm. 10 days, right? And so I think it is important that uh, it was important that we bring live examples to you rather than just showing you theoretical uh, what machine learning is, and that was not the intent. 
so that is the reason i think it funny is talking about more about uh, implementation rather than just the theory <laughs> yeah funny so there is one question on the chat pallavi thakur that why dl model is built instead of basic ml model in a specific reason yeah definitely so what happens uh here we are working on the text right so it and then we are projecting the text into the higher dimensions so with any statistical model or the tree based model right so we cannot uh derive the rules i mean which relates the input with the output what happens for example if we go uh with the tree based models what we need to do so tree based model try to i have find the rules let's say this word exist then it will go to another layer this word exist but what happens the review uh, the context of the review changes based on the words in the com complete review let's say if we have the lstm right it will generate you a 32 bit vector which is a compressed version of the all words and then it doesn't miss the semantic relationships among the words in the review which is not possible with the statistical learning models also at the same time so here we are dealing with uh, 10000 words which is very minimum so generally we used to deal with uh, 1 lakh 20000 words more than that so these statistical models cannot handle this huge data So I'm on, on my LVD, so I cannot see the questions. So I think there is an update. Yeah. I can read the questions for you. So, so yeah. what is the reason the such SUSTE? Not sure what that is. What is the reason the SUST? SUSTE. Yep. Can you please rephrase that question? Meanwhile, the next question is: What happens when the entropy value we increase or decrease as a parameter? Binary cross entropy. Yep. What happens when we increase or decrease the entropy? No, here. What happens here? Uh, here we are choosing the loss function, the binary cross entropy or the categorical cross entropy. In the next example, I will show you about the categorical cross entropy. Here, the binary cross entropy is to squash the values coming from the above dense layer of eight between the zero and one. so always because when we have the activation of the last layer as sigmoid you will have the value between 0 and 1 if there is any anything goes wrong we will get any n not a number i have seen the scenarios okay I think this will take some amount of time. So, shall we yeah, stop? Yeah, move on. I think. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I'll stop this. I think with this, I can't plot the diagrams. Also, yeah. So, in the previous training, what I have seen, like the model is giving the best accuracy and the less loss at the epoch number six. Hence, what I have done, I have trained the model on the complete data. So earlier we have split the data into training set and test set. Now, now we have trained the model on the complete data. Then, not sure this works or not. Yeah. So this is what I was talking about the embedding layer. Let's say I have a word success. When I say projecting the word success into the higher dimension. so the model will add this particular weightage to one word if you see there are 64 numbers in the given array so this we call it as a embedding vector And then here we have the some model summary so totally these are the number of parameters which we are training to uh, to achieve the highest success rate as you said if you go with the basic statistical model you will not have these many parameters so even you go with a logistic regression right so maximum you your number of parameters 
will be equal to the number of words you choose <coughs> in the model. But here we'll have a millions of parameters. So then we'll go to the next example, which is a hand written digit recognition from the MNIST. So here, so this is a use case where we need to classify the handwritten images. So we'll have a images of uh, 28 by 28 size, and we have the 60,000 images. Then for the 60,000 images for the training and 10,000 images for the testing, I can plot few images for you. So top 10, yeah. You see, these are the individual images, handwritten images. The objective of this use case is train the model on the handwritten images and predict on the unseen data. So we are going to train the model on the train images set and we are going to test it on the test images. So again, again, we are using the TensorFlow as a backend. On top of that, we are going to use Keras functional API. And then this is my network having the 512 neurons in the first layer followed by the 10. Because 10 has the 10 neurons in the second layer because we are going to identify the digits between 0 and 9. So totally 10 numbers. That is the reason we should have the 10 neurons in the last layer. And this is a softmax layer because there are multiple. I mean, we need to predict one out of the 10. So this the loss is going to the categorical cross entropy. I'm just preparing the training data quickly. I'll compile this. So here, what we are doing, we are reshaping the data. Generally, we have the 20 in the have the training data in the array of 28 by 28. But now we need to flatten this into the 28 into 28, which is 784. Right. Then we are quickly for this. Yes. This will get completed quickly. And if you see the my training loss is coming down and my accuracy is going up. So generally we deal with these type of images using the convolution neural networks. But here, because uh, this is a small example, I have directly used the dense layers. But CNNs are the ideal set of tools to deal with the images. So now I have trained my model, which is given me an accuracy of 0, 0.0, sorry, it's given me a lowest loss of 0 0.03 at the iteration five and the accuracy of 98%. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to predict, I'm going to make some predictions on my test data using the model which we have just built. So for this, what I'm going to do, I'm going to pick the first image from the test set. Just I'm plotting this. So this is a handwritten seven. Now in this block, I'm going to make some predictions on the same test image, right? So this is the output array. This output array has a probability for each and every value from zero to nine. So if you see the maximum probability of 0 0.999 is with is at the index number seven, which means the model predicted the handwritten digit as a seven. At the same time, if I evaluate my network on the complete test set, I'm getting the 97.7% accuracy. But this is just where we are dealing with the dense layers. But if we choose a convolution neural network, definitely it will go beyond 98, 98 or 99 also. Uh, funny sir, I have a doubt. Uh, like yeah. you have given an image of uh, zero to nine numbers. Like uh, so, so many images are being loaded on the okay. computer, and you are making a model, right? So here right. Uh, I have to identify seven. Why seven? Like we is it okay? Any number we are just giving the image, or any specific uh, purpose that we are giving nine numbers or ten numbers, or we are giving that image. No, actually, so uh, this data set contains only the handwritten digits. Like a one image will okay. have only one number. 
zero one two okay, like anything. that. The image may be anything. It may be can Correct. it may be like nine numbers or seven two numbers anything. But out of Correct. that, it is uh, if at all we are putting seven, it will give. If at all we are putting nine, it will give the accuracy. Exactly. So out of this whole image, how it will uh, calculate seven? Like because we have uh, you have given a whole number, no, as a image. So out of that, how the array uh, builds on? Uh, like all right, understood. I will show you this. What happens here? We have the train images, right? So we are classifying it. Okay, it's because uh, we are going on with sigma uh, relu function. No, sorry, softmax function. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this is what is happening here. If you see okay. for a given image, right? Uh -huh. So any any image, if you see, if you take the pixel, right, the pixel value will be between the zero and two fifty five. Okay. Correct. So zero zero is the absolute white, and two fifty five is the absolute black. Correct. Okay. So, but for the uh, to train using the machine learning model, what we do, like we divide the each and every value with the highest value, which is nothing but two fifty five, which I have done here. If you see this one. Two fifty five. That result. So by divided by two fifty. Any data, any any pixel, we have to divide by three two fifty five. Exactly. Image this side. Suppose there is a nine by nine matrix of this image, wherein um, zero, oh. one, two, three, like that. Nine columns are there, or nine rows are there. For that also, we have so to do two fifty five only. Yes. Generally, what we do so uh, for any neural network to work, right? So we need to. Define the input shape here. We have defined 28 by 28 as a shape. Okay. So if we have mm. a smaller images, nine by nine, then what we do? We used to pad that image with some blank pixels or white pixels. Okay. To make so it 28 it by 28. A, it may be a number. It may be anything. It may be a, a cat or a bat or anything. But we have to make it as like train images as type, float yes. or whatever it is. It is mandatory. Okay. So this is the end of my second example, MNIST data. Right. Then we'll go back to the slides. Yeah. So coming to this. So this is a simple example of the second category of machine learning, which is unsupervised machine learning. So unsupervised machine learning will not have any labels. So what the model will do, it has to identify some similar groups out of the data. If you see in the bottom right, so the model should categorize these into females, males, Simpson family, school employees. So these are the categories it is able to identify from the data without, without any label. Right. So again, this unsupervised has it can solve two types of problems. One is clustering and one is the association problem. So I will show you the example for the clustering coming to the. Yeah, again, we'll go back. So this is a topic model. Topic modeling use case, right? So this particular data set, right? It contains more than 11,000 news articles. So our objective is to uh, group the similar news articles together. So I'll just import this. Anyway, yeah. So if you see the length of data, it has 11,314. Right. So what we're doing <clears throat> again. Here we are using a model called distilled bed. If you see here, yeah, this distilled bed base NLI mean tokens. So uh, Google has provided uh, Google has provided us some pre-trained models, and distilled bed is one of them. Right. So what happens? Wh what do you mean by pre-trained model? So every pre-trained model will con is something that is trained on the large corpus, something like a Wikipedia and all, like. The one which I have shown you here, right? So the embedding vector, right? So like the embedding vector here, I have shown you a 64 dimension embedding vector. So this particular bet model will come, will have a vector assigned for each of the word in its dictionary, but the embedding sizes will be very huge. It is going to be 768 dimension. 
So, so we are we are going to utilize this particular Google bit here. So uh, this model when it encodes the data. I'll show you this. Yeah, I'll start with this. Okay. So every row in the data frame is a news article. Which is a free text. So, and then we are going to generate one embedding out of each and every news article. So the model is encoding. It's clubbing all the words in the news article and finally generating one huge embedding value, which is a 768 dimension. So I have this pre run Jupyter notebook because it will take a lot of time. Then what we do once we have the embeddings in the higher dimension, so we can't cluster them so easily into different different groups. So we need to do the dimension reduction for this. And we have a library called UMAP. So UMAP will reduce the 768 dimension vectors into a five dimension here without losing the embedding values. And this is a cosine is a similarity to maintain the distance with the other observations here. Then HTTPS scan is something which we use to club the similar uh, what, I can, what I can say to cluster the data. And when I plot this right, so the all these news articles are clustered like this. So each color describes a news article. So not news article, it's a group of new news article. So there are these many news articles which are talking about a particular topic. So these are the latent topics which we can rename them further before we present before we present it to someone else. So this is the unsupervised learning and this uh, this particular notebook it explains about the clustering as well as the dimension reductions. And so then we'll go back to the this one. Sorry. So reinforcement machine learning. So, <clears throat> so this is a last type of machine learning, right? So which works on this rewards and penalty system. So the goal is to reward a machine when it learns the right patterns and to penalize the machine when it learns the wrong pattern. And ultimately the machine has to learn the rules which will give the highest rewards. So the typical examples are self-driving cars and the and machines learn how to play. So this is the end of our use cases and we have built some models on the publicly available data sets. So and this is a universal workflow of machine learning. So if you take any machine learning problem, either you are dealing with a statistical machine learning approach or deep learning or tree based, whatever it is. So we need to uh, we need to stick to a standard set of rules. And the first one is what do you what is your input data be and what are you trying to predict? So what is your input data? Is it numbers or text? What are you trying to predict? Are you trying to predict a continuous variable like a house price regression, the Boston house price regression use case? Or are you trying to predict something like a classification problem? Either is my movie review is positive or negative or something? So these two are the basics here. Then what is the type of problem you're solving? So binary classification, how we did for the movie reviews, single label multi-class classification. This is what we did in the uh, MNIST digit recognition. Scalar regression is what we have done in the Boston data set. Multi-class multi-label classification is the one which we have done with the NER, named entity recognition or something else. The second one. So we need uh, we need to define our hypothesis before we start with any machine learning model. So uh, we start with a hypothesis that our outputs can be predicted from the available inputs and we have sufficient amount of data to, pre uh, to predict the outcomes. Let's say uh, this is an iterative approach. We start with some set of data and try to pre uh, and try to make the predictions. If we the machine learning model is not giving you the right number of accuracy. Again, we have to go back to our uh, step number one and we need to revise our hypothesis like the example which I have explained you sometime back the online store 
which where you are trying to predict the sales of woolen cloths in summer. So here we don't have right set of data. Ultimately, the machine learning model doesn't work well on this type of data. So immediately what we'll do, we'll go back to the step number one and we redefine the hypothesis saying, OK, we need to update the data here, then collect some additional amount of data. Collect some additional amount of data and come back. Then again, run the model. So if still it is, I mean, if it gives a better accuracy, well and good. If it doesn't give you a good accuracy, again, we need to go back. So then again, we need to check, are there any other factors which are affecting the outcome apart from the set we have? Let's say um, we have the sales data for a year. I mean, after collecting some more data, so we have collected the sales data for a complete year and we did the prediction. Still, our model is not able to do well. Right. Then we have to go back and see is the brand of a particular cloth is affecting the price. If yes, it's an Indian brand or international brand. So we need to add these two predictors back. And then we need to build our model. So this is a completely iterative approach and not all the times we can uh, we can make the predictions. That's why we say not all the problems can be solved. So again, this is a very good example when you are predicting the movement of a stock based on the recent price history. We cannot succeed. Because we cannot predict the stock price based on the previous price of the share. So there are many things which affects the price of a stock. So we need to update our training data in a iterative basis. Then what is your measure of success for any machine learning model? Is it accuracy or precision on recall? So coming to this uh, for the collateral monitoring QC. So we have 26,000 actionable records and 6,000 non-actionable records where my data is highly imbalanced. Right. So if I train my model based on accuracy, simple. Let's say if my model predicts all 32,000 records are as non-actionable, I will get an accuracy more than 80%, 80-85%. But that model is useless because it is good to identify only non-actionables. It cannot identify actionables. So in this case, I have to choose the precision and recall as, a, as my measure of success. So out of actionables or non-actionables identified, how many are true actionables or true non-actionables? That is where my precision will come. So how many false positives my machine is, uh, my machine learning model is identifying? So that will help me to calculate the recall. So when we have the data imbalance issue, right? So we we follow two methods. One is upsampling or down downsampling. So 26,000 we have non-actionable. These 6,000 will try to create duplicates and make it as 26,000. So totally you will have 52,000 records for training. This is upsampling, or reduce some number of training samples from the non-actionable and make it as 6,000. So totally you will have the 12,000 uh, tra training records. And these methods based on the tree or deep learning models, right? They are um, they are giving us an option to assign some weightage for the uh, for the minority class, I can say. So just we can calculate a weightage. Let's say for each actionable record, how many non-actionables I have? What is the ratio? It is one is to twelve or one is to fifteen. So based on that, I will calculate some class weightage and include it in the model. So the model will consider these two, it will give the equal importance to both the classes. Otherwise, if you if you take the accuracy as your measure of success, your machine learning model can take any shortcut to improve your accuracy. Then developing a model that does better than a baseline. So here we can go back to sir, our- Sir, I want to ask one question here. Yeah, please, please. Yeah. Yes, uh, sir, uh, that you told uh, if the unlabeling, uh, the labeling data is a mismatch, then we have to uh, upsampling and downsampling, whatever the term that you have used. Mm -hmm. Sir, uh, uh, the meaning of that point which you have explained is we have to create more data. Correct. So for that also some provision is there in, uh, I mean, uh, the libraries or what? Yes, we have libraries, yes. 
Okay. So we can use the scikit-learn. Uh, we have the scikit-learn library, which is built on top of Python, or you can use the caret package if you are using our environment, or okay. for statistical learning. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Or better, you first you try with the class weightage option. If it doesn't work, try to upsample or downsample. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So here we are. We're trying. So we. So we have the slide where we are discussing about the developing a model which does better than a baseline. So we'll go back to our movie reviews example, the model which we just trained. Let's say here, I have not that one. Better we'll go back to the collateral monitoring. Same. Yeah, we have 32,000 training records, sort of which. Of which 26,000 are non-actionable and 6,000 as actionable. So in this case, if I so if I predict each observation as non-actionable, I'm going to get 85% of accuracy. So the my baseline is to build a model that beats this 85% of baseline. So when when I am able to create a model which do this, I mean which can give me the uh, more than 85% accuracy, then we'll say, yes, this model has some statistical power. Right, again, again, so coming back to the same step, if we are not able to be, uh, beat the baseline accuracy, we need to revisit our hypothesis as we have defined earlier. As we hypothesize, the outputs can be predicted from the given inputs, and we have sufficient data, which is informative data, to learn the relationships. So that is what we have to do. And this is your public data sets. And I think many of you are aware of our Kaggle, right? So the data sets which we have used just now, IMDB or MNIST data set, or Boston House Press Regression, are available on Kaggle. You can easily download that. And driven data, this is where we have I mean, Divin Data also an online uh, competition platform where uh, Facebook and many other companies are uh, hosting some competitions here. So this is a technology stack we are using in the bank currently. So we are using Python 3.6, and I have shown you all the examples in the Jupyter notebook. You can use any Python ID, something like a Spider or IntelliJ. And to start with, better you start with the scikit-learn package, which is built on top of Python, which has all the statistical, all the statistical algorithms, starting from the linear regression till the tree-based one. So, if you want to work with the text or images, better to you start with with the deep learning. So, and try to explore the convolution neural networks and the LSTM for the large text, and try to learn on the word embeddings, which I have shown you in the 64 dimension. And transfer learning is something where we have used Google Bird and Spacey. And there are some pre trained models for each and every task, like uh, for the regression and the classification. Even there, uh, there are some other packages, like uh, which are to, uh, to work with the images, something like RSNet. So, this is the end of our presentation. So, if you have, anyone have any questions, please feel free to ask. Thanks, Rani. I think uh, <clears throat> while people are uh, thinking about the questions, right, I just wanted to add that uh, as you can see, right, this is all prediction when you see uh, uh, machine learning models, and it's all about data. What data you have, what you is what you get, right? That's what it is. Now, it. So what I'm trying to emphasize here is that uh, we. Uh, the data set that you prepare has to be balanced data set and it has to make sure that it covers all scenarios equally. Now, if you give it data which is not balanced, you will not get the output that is desired uh, and uh, it could be biased, for example, right? Why I'm saying biased is, uh, say, for example, there is uh, there was this study that uh, was done in the LAPD, uh, which is the Los Angeles Police Department about the crime rate in the city over last 10 years. And they were trying to identify what, who are the criminals and uh, what type of people actually are into, into this crime. Uh, so what they did was they fed data, which was 
a very biased data set and uh, and what came out was that only uh, the black people or the black community was uh, coming out as criminals right this was because the data set that was fed intentionally or unintentionally we don't know was more to do with only black black people are involved in criminal activities now that created a big hue and cry within after the results were published and that's where people started thinking about having some kind of governance around what is being predicted and that's exactly where i'm saying the biases will be there so data that is biased and intentionally intentionally would give you biased results to avoid all of that it's important that we have balanced data and uh, that's exactly the reason every model that we build at least within jp morgan and put it in production we have to go through a model governance council now they check for all these imbalances they check for outputs they check for evidences that you have collected have the data that you fed in whether it's balanced whether they have, you provided all the shades of data that it, the model will be able to predict on to avoid these these uh, uh, these bias predictions that can damage the reputation of the company when these models are directly used by users or the output is directly used by the users and uh, uh, so that's exactly and that's a big risk to the reputation of the firm to avoid this there is a model dev governance council that reviews all the data sets and uh, use cases and tk studies that are being put into production so that's a very big uh, uh, governance uh, uh, toll gate that we have before we move into production just wanted to make sure that everyone is aware that uh, it's not about just getting the data out of uh, this entire machine learning models and 100% you believe that it's true right i mean it's all about how how much data that you have provided what is the the the, the balance of data that you provided and all scenarios that you covered that you want to predict so i'll stop at that and uh, any questions feel free to answer ask we'll make our best attempt to answer your questions all right i think we kind of uh, are through with our session um, uh, so rathod sir uh, back to you i think this was what we had uh, in this session and uh, anyone uh, any time you have any other questions that you want to get answer feel free to reach out to rathod sir and uh, he will definitely reach out to us if we are able to answer your question we definitely will want to do it so participants last chance last technical session so you you can have now uh, yes please go ahead they are all experts funny sir uh, funny sir <laughs> right when yeah, we are going with uh, this data uh, like uh, building the model with text uh, do, do we use nl this all comes under nlp or ml generally generally we, we are using neural net you told that we are using uh, hidden layers for uh, identifying the text processing and everything because we have uh, imported keras and we are using api as right. keras and uh, tensorflow so these all mm -hmm. comes under nlp i am completely a starter in this but i have very mm -hmm. minimum idea and whatever uh, i have an idea of nlp i am just asking you don't laugh for my question <laughs> uh, no 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 so i see the natural language processing is a field where we can use uh, machine learning because i i last in the two sessions before when they have gone with nlp they were telling that whenever we are going with text data we generally use for transformation or translation or uh, getting retrieving the text uh, then we are using nlp so as you as a part of your use case also you are taking mm -hmm. like test uh, reviews or whatever it is you are taking the maximum test and uh, based on that you are uh, analyzing your model that whether we have to uh, make it actionable or non actionable so for that reason Correct. i was asking that uh, it is nlp related or uh, it's a direct ml model 
uh, I mean, I, I see this an implementation of machine learning for natural language processing. See, we can implement, we can use the ML in NLP as well as image processing or into some okay. other application, right? Okay, so maximum. Uh, yeah, sorry, uh, Dr. Bushpa. So this is, so if you look at uh, what we built in the earlier session, if you, you saw, right, the chatbot that we built, huh. right? Yes. Right, I think that, that is, it doesn't have a lot of data set, right? But it recognizes what the user is trying to achieve. Uh, and it and that's through natural language processing and there are libraries dedicated to extract that information. So like, for example, what is the weather today, right? So I, you would ask the bot, what is the weather today? But uh, then someone else will go to Wikipedia uh, library and right, right. Can, uh, from Mumbai yes, or anything correct. it will tell us. Yeah. Correct. So, so like extracting a context out of some jumbled words, right? So that where the, that's where you would use uh, natural language processing and to really give you a meaningful sentence or a question that can be answered. Otherwise, okay. ten, one question could be answered in 10 different ways by 10 different people. So hmm. to derive meaning out of it, you would definitely use some natural language processing libraries. So NLP is only a part of ML, like uh, uh, the whole right. deep learning is, uh, we are using that libraries also. So to what extent I understood is, uh, NLP libraries are available, which we will use to solve the use cases uh, wherein we are trying to make ML predict model, right? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So right, whenever actually, you have, uh, yeah, go ahead, funny. Yeah, the spacey model, right, which I have shown you in the example. Yes. Uh, yeah, that is one of the library. So, correct. So spacey, they themselves they expose as a language model, but internally the spacey has a neural network built. It's a huge network. Okay. So which was which was which was pre-trained on the large uh, large uh, text vector, something like a Wikipedia and all. But they will not expose all the network layers to the end users. So they will show it as a language model only, not as, but language model, but hidden there are some layers there, neural network layers. Okay. So we here, uh, you, you have given epochs and you have given dense layers and uh, exactly. like uh, yeah. for the images. So how we will try to the, like fight well, you have given for one thing and uh, uh, you Correct. have given that because two are there too. So when, uh, because it was a binomial entropy, you have given right. uh, dense layers as two. So if at all it is a classification problem, based on the classification, we have to give the layer that. No, when it is layers. a binary, I have given the binary, uh, I mean, when it is a binary classification problem, where we are trying to predict the movie review as positive or review, uh, I have used okay. only one layer, dense of yes. one, with uh, the activation of sigmoid. Assuming yes. my yeah. the last layer outcome will be between zero and one, so I will take zero point five as a yeah. threshold. So anything less than zero point five will go to positive review. Greater than zero point five will go to as a negative review. Hmm. Right. So for that we so, have given two. There. No, only one. One. One, only one. one. Only In one. In another example which you have shown, you have given dense layers as five and two. And uh, the down program code was two layers you have given. I don't remember exactly that. So uh, there uh, I have given the uh, first layer of 5 and 2 and second layer as 10 because uh, the 10. incoming image can be one of the uh, one of the digit between 0 and 9. Okay, okay, zero yeah, yeah, got it. Nine. Yeah, okay, okay. So that's the but reason you have. So if at all it's not uh, numbers, if at all it's uh -huh. text, then how we will give 26? If it is a character, yes. Okay, so because A to uh, Z it will be 26, okay, right. Exactly, yep. So if at all it's lines, then anything is possible. Yeah, image can be anything. Yes, yes, it can be anything. So here, I mean, we are dealing with the uh, binary classification where the particular image is, I mean, we have some use cases, data sets available on the same Kaggle, where we need to identify the image contains a cat or dog. So you and one thing I didn't understood what is the parameters like you were telling that suppose we are going mm -hmm. to the parameters the parameters will be equivalent to number of words it will be and in this uh, we have got so many parameters at the end of the uh, result you were just telling that hyper parameters mm -hmm. of parameters I didn't got that point like how what so, is the uh, parameter yeah. means which is uh, impacting uh, that particular uh, prediction or uh, 
uh, analyzing the data. Fani, can you just bring up the notebook? I, in IB, I think you got parameters, number of parameters are 65,000 like that. And uh, you have specifically told that uh, parameters so will those, be more. Yeah, those, correct. Yeah. Those are the weights the model will change during its training. So those okay, are the internal okay. weights for each and okay, every layer. Okay. Let's okay. say I will tell you a simple example. In your first layer, you have two nodes. In your second yes. layer, you have two nodes, right? Yeah. So in a dense layer, every node is connected to other nodes. So four, four, like one will be connected to two and second node will be connected to two. So we are having so four totally, layers now. No, totally, we have eight weights. Yeah, so eight layer, weights, yeah. So, the, so in the similar way, when I choose the number of layers in a uh, number number of nodes in the layer as 512, and okay. the subsequent layer as 64, this each node in the 500, sorry, each node in the 512 will be connected to the 64. So it's like 512 so into 64. Okay, so that is a parameter. Weight is a parameter. Okay. Exactly. Yeah, that is a weight. Also, we'll have a bias. Will yeah, have bias bias because exactly. uh, yeah, right. That, that is simple actually. Happen. No, my uh, in a simple example, right? So when we start with a linear regression, mm. we have a basic formula y equal to mx, y plus, MX plus c. c. C, right. So here we, I mean, when I learned in college, I learned C as a con constant. Constant, yeah. <laughs> so, but, but in the machine learning world, C is a y-intercept. Yes. And M is a slope in the linear regression. It is going to be a one value. Yes. Coming to the deep learning, it is going to be that six million values, six million weights. Okay. So that is how it different. But ultimately, it's a, the basics are same. Here you are yeah. training with only one weight. Here with a million number of weights. That's it. Okay. Right. So thank you for clarifying because no completely when I was hearing the deep learning lectures, I was worried that how these weights will be taken into consideration and how the weights uh, goes on. And uh, he was completely telling that parameters, parameters. So <laughs> I was uh, <laughs> so that stuck into mind. OK, so thank you. So thank you very much. No and so I'm uh, writing a book anything, name here. Anything uh, when we go with arrays, we have to use TensorFlow and Keras. When it, whenever we want to do with images, uh, definitely we have to use these libraries because uh, uh, we have to simple, use that in, it is embedded to arrays, embedded into arrays. Uh, right. So for arrays, uh, definitely we have to go with TensorFlow. I mean, in industry, people will use a uh, few people will use OpenAI, few people will use TensorFlow. So we started with TensorFlow and uh, we are very comfortable with this. Okay. So in general, uh, TensorFlow is now applicable, like? Yes, yes. TensorFlow is applicable. Right. So I have written a book name here, Deep Learning. The author is Franco Estuolet. He is the author of this particular Keras library. Uh, Dr. Pushpa, ma'am. Much of noise is coming from my background, so I unmuted. Oh, sorry. <laughs> okay. So right. I can, definitely yeah. I will go with this, sir. Uh, so this is a very nice book, actually. We, who, uh, I mean, this author explains all the concepts from uh, zero to, I mean, it's a very nice book, actually. And when we go with TensorFlow, definitely we have to create a different environment, sir. Or uh, in the normal environment also, we can make it out TensorFlow. You can, you can create a separate environment. Every time, whenever we go with, we have to create a separate environment for TensorFlow. Right. Generally, uh, how we do in JPMC is whenever we work on a different project, right? Let's say I'm working on project A, so I will create a Python Conda environment. Yeah. So when I start with a different project, I will completely create a different environment because here I have I might use Spacey 2.1, there's Spacey 2.2. Okay. So for the only because I am now downloading it, so I am asking you. Right. So okay. thank, thank you, sir. Thank you. No problem. Anybody, any other question? Anybody wants to ask? Muktar sir, you want to ask anything? 
I think I already answered in the chat box. So, Parak sir, I think uh, there are no more questions. Yeah. So, thank you so much, guys. I think this was excellent and a complete learning experience for me and my team as well. Thanks, uh, Rathod sir, for providing us all this opportunity, and uh, hope this. Uh, sir, 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 you are taking my time. I this is <laughs> this is my time to say thanks. <laughs> This is, this is my turn. It is my turn now. Now I'm supposed to say that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so I'm all ready and ears to what you will say. But before that, I want to thank you because this was a learning experience for me as well and my team. And hopefully, this made some sense. Uh, and you spent some good time today that you will probably take back some learnings from it. That was the whole intention. Yes, Thanks sir, everyone yes, who's sir. joined in and and especially Rathod sir who's made all the attempts. And uh, and bear with us uh, for all these while before even testing some connectivity and uh, all those issues that you were facing. So thanks, Rathod sir. I mean, appreciate all your efforts and uh, coordinating. Uh, thank thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much. Actually, uh, JPMC is now one of the company which has boosted my confidence to the next level <laughs> because from last two so to three years, I, I am interacting continuously with uh, uh, JPMC uh, staff, particularly with the Rohit and the Anirudh sir, and they have extended their hand, uh, helping hand to our college also. We have set up a uh, courses like uh, you must be knowing, no? uh, scope course we call it as a skill development courses. Yeah. And you, uh, I don't know, you may be training, one of you may be training also online going on right now. Teams so thank you very much. Morgan. Yeah, so there's a lot of people. So this is our first opportunity and definitely looking forward to something that comes on next year as well. Yeah, so uh, th thank you very much. Uh, thanks a lot, Parak sir. Uh, uh, what do I say? You have started from the basics of RPA. Uh, what exactly RPA is? When you have explained the myths in RPA, I liked uh, all those slides. I was listening very patiently to what you were telling. And uh, then you uh, started with the architecture, all kinds of tool sets that are used. So you have clearly explained uh, all the basic concepts of RPA. So thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Parak, sir. And uh, this is our kind of a virtual moment, we call it. It's kind of a certificate. And uh, yeah. please accept it. Yeah, <laughs> do send me a soft yeah. copy. I, I like it. Yes. <laughs> yeah, 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 sir. Yes. And uh, this is for Harish, sir. Yeah. Great. <laughs> uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Harish, sir, thank you very much. You also explained uh, all the basic fundamental theoretical concepts and you have given the very good overview of the uh, uh, kind of uh, automation anywhere and UI path. Uh, that was very interesting. So, uh, because you have introduced UI path and automation anywhere, and yesterday there was a session on work fusion. Now I'm I'm, I'm confident that uh, at least uh, even if uh, people have not practiced and so on session on any of these tools, but they have got the insights of all these at least these three tools. And on one of the slide, actually Parak sir has explained which which are the leading uh, tool sets in this domain, and uh, they have got the insights. You have opened the tool, you have shown the case studies. Very nice, very nice. So I think. Uh, those who wants to practice in, uh, with their students or in their colleges, now they definitely have confidence to talk about what is RPA at least. Okay. So thank you, Hari sir. Thank you very much. Thank you again. Okay. Uh, Shoaib sir, thanks a lot. Yeah, thank, thank you very much. Thanks. Shoaib sir has uh, shown very nice, very nice videos at the end. Case studies <laughs> very, very quick. I like that idea. Very quick and so many case studies he has shown. And that is what is actually the recipe. I don't know whether participants or attendees have actually realized the importance of, of that or not. I really don't know about it uh, because it's an online session. We can't even uh, see the reactions of the people. But those case studies, no one shares. And it's, 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 a, it's a great thing. We are getting the case studies which you people have actually worked on. And within a fraction of seconds, you are demonstrating that entire flow. It was it was really great thing. Shoaib, thank you very much. You online you have show, uh, actually shown how to create a bot and all those things. Really great, great, great job. Thank you, Shoaib. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thanks for the opportunity. Yeah. yeah. And finally, funny Krishna sir. So la evening uh, last betting <laughs> was done by funny <laughs> Krishna entire rebel algorithms. 
एक्चुअली आई वॉज ऑल्सो थिंकिंग अभी फनी कृष्णा सर इतना हमने बारह दिन रिग्रेशन क्लासिफिकेशन ये सब कर रहे हैं अभी ये बताएंगे क्या आई वॉज एक्चुअली इंटरेस्टेड टू नो के लास्ट सेशन में बताएंगे क्या बट नाउ आफ्टर द सेशन आई एम रियली थैंकफुल टू इनफैक्ट पराग सर आई वुड से फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल बिकॉज ही हैज इंट्रोड्यूस यू हियर and uh, uh, really great because you have uh, given the different insights even though we have learned for 10 11 days but still uh, i i felt that are kuch to chhut gaya fir bhi aapka session dekhne ke baad so uh, thank you very much you have you have brought very very interesting case studies in, and detailed case studies you have shared with us and thank you funny sir thank you so much sir it's a pleasure <laughs> thanks a lot thanks a lot and participant this is what we wanted jtmc session that uh, uh, their case studies their insights they are working day in and day out on these technologies and they have given us very good excellent speakers uh, very uh, means those who are working on these technologies it's not a theoretical concept no i don't think you will get this in the books correct these case studies so these are live case studies so thank you thanks a lot thank you very much uh, all of uh, thanks the speakers all the speakers uh now i will only speak to participants for few words because they have tomorrow last session so for instructions from them so parak sir thank you very much you can leave if you want uh parak yeah, sir yeah, sure. Sure, can, sure sure thank yeah. thanks a lot and, and happy learning and uh, thanks to you uh, thanks again thank you sir thank you very much thank you thank you thank you sir thank you thank you bye thank you thank you थैंक्स अलर्ट थैंक्स सो पार्टिसिपेंट्स थैंक यू वेरी मच कल का तो हमारा ऑफिशियल थैंक है लेकिन आज मैं आपको वैसे ही थैंक बोल देता हूँ थैंक यू टू पुष्पा मैडम स्पेशल थैंक्स टू पुष्पा मैडम आपको बताना सर क्योंकि इतने डाउट्स को आपने सहा है अरे नहीं मैडम आप समझती नहीं है मैं इज्जत रख रही है किसी हर सेशन में होना सर जो डाउट के साथ है जिसको समझ में नहीं आता है <laughs> उटली even if you are not understood no you can ask them to repeat they'll repeat they, they are all good people no matter they have come for what see now jpmc these all these guys they are continuously in touch with me and i did took lot of effort to bring them on board you know it, it, it took yes, lot sir, of effort i can, to, we can to understand their sir, it's very difficult yes it's, it's very difficult to get them and then it is not that they go on teaching no wo teaching thodi karte hai still see how interesting sessions they have made out unka teaching job nahi hai na they 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 do all these coding yes, and all sir, that yes sir Like yes, we are scared, getting scared. Uh, all these industry <laughs> no, no. people, if they are coming into the teaching field, and where we will be going? No, no, no. That's no, a very good, very good thing to, teaching. Very good to, to teaching. the <laughs> teaching society, sir. <laughs> no, no, no. Why, why they? सर या और एक बात है अभी आपने जो माइलस्टोन्स दिया है वो हमारे वाले जैसे लोगों को तो बहुत ही मुश्किल है मैंने आज आप, आप सोचो मैंने आज दो घंटे वेस्ट किए माइलस्टोन स्टोन वन पे क्योंकि मुझे समझ नहीं आ रहा मैं कहा नहीं नहीं, नहीं नहीं उसको 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 वेस्ट नहीं बोलते उसको इन्वेस्ट बोलते हैं मुझसे तो नहीं हुआ सर लिसन 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 वॉट सी वी हैव क्रिएटेड मैं पहले भी बोला हूँ ये अलग अलग मैकेनिज्म क्रिएट करने का पर्पज ये है कि सबको एकोमोडेट करे ना लास्ट में आप अपना मीन हम असाइनमेंट सबमिट करें कि नहीं करें हमें वो कोड तो प्रोवाइड करो सर कल होने के बाद लिसन लिसन सुनो बस छोटे छोटे इसमें वो, वो उसके नहीं नहीं सिलिंग उसके लिए आप निकत सर के आ, निकत सॉरी निकत मैम के साथ में सेपरेटली बात कर सकते हैं हाँ सी हाँ।, हाँ वो आप सॉल्व करती है मैडम उसके लिए आप आपको अगर उसके इंटरेस्ट है आपके एरर्स में इसमें उसमें तो मैडम आपको हेल्प आउट करेंगे आई एम हंड्रेड परसेंट श्योर मैडम इस कपल ऑफ हेल्पिंग आउट इन दो दस ओके नहीं नहीं वो मुझे नहीं पता आप कोड मांगेगी तो मैडम आपको डायरेक्टली कोड देंगी ग्रेड रेडी आई डोंट नो दैट मैडम इज हैंडलिंग दैट बट आई एम हंड्रेड परसेंट श्योर सी इज सी इज कैपेबल ऑफ हैंडलिंग योर डाउट्स दैट मच आई एम श्योर
ठीक है एज फर एज दैट असाइनमेंट इज कंसर्न सेकेंड पॉइंट इज ऑल ऑफ यू प्लीज सबमिट दैट इवेल्युएशन शीट वो हमने इसीलिए दिया है ताकि ताकि आप लोग जो लोग कोडिंग ना कर पाए एटलीस्ट इवेल्युएशन शीट तो हमको भर के दे सो प्लीज प्लीज डू दैट हाँ प्लीज डू दैट और कल का एग्जाम को अपियर जरूर हुआ आपको कितना भी मार्क्स मिलो जैसा गेट एग्जाम में मिलता है ना उसके बाद में अपटेक को एलिजिबल होते हैं तो आप उसको आप उसको अपियर मिल जाते हैं सर लेकिन कंसेप्ट वैसे ही रह जाते हैं नहीं मिल जाते हैं सर and i i know one or two more request from my side on youtube is all these videos are available they will remain over there uh, hum us main usko delete nahi karunga jab tak ke koi technical issue na aaye are you getting my point ke samajh lo yo hum log kar hi nahi pa rahe youtube pe aur zyada videos upload nahi kar pa rahe ya koi aur restriction aa jata hai or something else happens then only i am going to remove otherwise i will keep them as it is on youtube why should i remove so you in future uh, also uh, look at all fdp ka video fdp 1 2 3 aap apne bachcho ko bhi bata sakte hai aapko jisko pass on karna hai usko bhi pass on kar sakte hai lekin main aur ek suggest karunga ki agar aap download karke rakhenge to better hai है ना आ, अगर वो डिलीट डिलीट हो गए तो मुझे मुझे नहीं पता कि डिलीट होने के बाद आप मुझे मत पूछना कि सर वो वहां पे थे अभी मुझे वापस चाहिए वो सब नहीं भेजूगा भाई बाबा वो बहुत सर इनाग्रल का नहीं है सर इनाग्रल स्पीच है, 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 है। एक भी वीडियो ऐसा नहीं जो मिसिंग है मैडम एवरी थिंग इज देयर हाउ टू हाउ टू सी यू गो टू वीडियो और वहां पे क्लिक लिंक होता है जिसको आप पास वीडियो करके चेक करो इट इज देयर इट इज देयर ओके ओके हाँ और एक पॉइंट बताता हूँ मैं आपको जो मुडल पे हम लोग डेटा डाल के रखे हुए हैं एफडीपी वन का भी डेटा है एफडीपी टू का भी अभी है जो और जिसने भी जो डेटा दिया है हम वो डालते हैं तुरंत मैं सबके पीछे लगता हूँ कुछ लोग देते हैं कुछ लोग नहीं देते हैं है ना कुछ लोग बोलते हैं नो सर कॉन्फिडेंशियल विल नॉट डू ओके इट इज ओके सो वट इज अवेलेबल इट इज देर सो एफ डी का डेटा आप सब लोग अभी डाउनलोड कर लो ठीक है उसमें से जो भी है क्योंकि उस पर कितना दिन रहेगा मुझे नहीं पता बट आई एम गोइंग टू किप इट now because i i am going to hide that data once this uh, once this fdp gets over because fdp3 is immediately going to start within a week so we will put only fdp3 ka data over there but let me tell you once fdp3 is over i am going to uh, remove that hide part from fdp1 2 3 all at least mai 8 din ke liye zarur rakhunga aapko jitna chahiye usme se aap jo bhi aapne miss kiya hoga download nahi kiya hoga to aap kar lena mujhe koi problem nahi hai aap data le lena लेकिन उसके बाद में मेरा दिमाग मत खाना के मुझे यस यस बट देन उसके बाद मेरा दिमाग मत खाना के हमको ये चाहिए वो चाहिए ये वो भेजो वाई विल नॉट डू ऑल थिंग्स सर बहुत एडवांस रहेगा क्या थर्ड एफडीपी अच्छा थर्ड एफडीपी का आपको इमीडिएटली कहा भी ये किसका वैलिडिटी होने के बाद आपको तुरंत उसका शेड्यूलर सब हम भेज देंगे एडवांस नहीं द पर्पज ऑफ थर्ड एफ डीपी इज केस स्टडीज डेटा साइंस में जो केस स्टडीज है वो हम डिस्कस करेंगे और डीप लर्निंग के कुछ सेशन दैट से so uh, i'm sure you will like the schedule also and resource persons also particularly inaugural ke liye humne jinko bulaya hai she is a very very renowned aur unke piche bhi main dekh do mahine se hu uske baad mein madam ka appointment mila hai so please attend that on time is is ek baat hai sir ek baat hai main kal mein bata paungi ki nahi aap itne active rehte ho ki sare sessions ko aur sare speakers ko identify karna sabke sath karna कल के लिए रखिये आप कल के लिए कुछ लोग तो भी हम लोग अनम्यूट करेंगे एटलीस्ट आई रिक्वेस्ट दो और तीन लोग तो अपना फीडबैक दीजिए ऐसा नहीं होना चाहिए कोई बोलता नहीं Yes, आपने भी पूछ ही लिया तो एफ डी पी थ्री का मैं जस्ट आपको अगर जिस देना चाहूँ तो वी आर स्टार्टिंग फ्रॉम लीगल स्टडीज जो इनोग्रेट करेंगे वो मैडम एडवोकेट एट सुप्रीम कोर्ट सुप्रीम कोर्ट में एडवोकेट है जो साइबर लॉज लिखती है जो हम फॉलो करता है पूरा देश उसको अच्छा। हमने बुलाया है इससे ज्यादा कौन हो सकता है है ना तो आपको... सॉल्व होता है क्या साइबर साइबर क्राइम और प्रॉब्लम्स वगैरह इंडिया में सॉल्व होता है क्या उनको पूछने का 
उनके लिए क्वेश्चन मेरे लिए नहीं ठीक है क्योंकि प्रोबेबिलिटी वाइज आई डोंट थिंक सो सर ओनली 40% क्राइम सर इट इज सो सो मैडम मैडम हमने दो लॉयर को बुलाया अगले सेशन में जो इनॉग्रल इनॉग्रेट करेंगे दे आर वेरी रिनॉन्ड एंड दे आर टेक्नोक्रेट एंड लॉयर बिलीव मी और उनका प्रोफाइल इतना जबरदस्त है कि दे रिप्रेजेंट इंडिया एट इंटरनेशनल लेवल टू डिफरेंट फोरम्स तो आप प्लीज वो अटेंड करना और बाकी सब हमने केस स्टडीज कवर किया है इंक्लूडिंग ऑटोनोमस ड्राइविंग से लेके तो लीगल स्टडीज से लेके तो हेल्थ केयर से लेकर तो अलग अलग सेक्शंस में जहां जहां जो जो पॉसिबल है वो है ना तो ऑल दो ट्राई टू कवर अप सो दैट इज ओके और प्लीज कल का एग्जाम दीजिए और कल अगर हो सके तो आप हम अनम्यूट करने लगाएंगे आपको आपके चेहरे तो दिखा के जाओ कम से कम जैसा मेरा तो आपने देख लिया है लेकिन आपका हमने नहीं देखा है तो वैलिडिटी के वक्त एक एक कॉमन ग्रुप का फोटोग्राफ तो कम से कम होना चाहिए फॉर एटलीस्ट फॉर रिकॉर्ड अवर रिकॉर्ड सो आई विल रिक्वेस्ट एज सुन एज अवर सर्टिफिकेशन इज ओवर वी विल रिक्वेस्ट यू टू अनम्यूट यूर माइक दिस कैमरा हाँ तो आपको पहले बता के रख रहा हूँ तो प्लीज वोट कर देना एक हमारा रिक्वेस्ट है ठीक है एंड यू वॉन्ट एनी अदर हेल्प वी आर ऑलवेज देयर फॉर यू ओके तो थैंक यू वेरी मच डन देन टूडेज टूडेज इंस्ट्रक्शन आर डन एनीथिंग एल्स एनी कमिटी मेंबर कोई हाजिर है कि मैं अकेला हूँ किसी को कुछ बोलना है कोई नहीं है शायद एनीबडी इज देयर पल्लवी मैडम अजुन को नहीं है ठीक है आई डोंट थिंक दैट मीन देर आर एनी इंस्ट्रक्शन टू बी गिवन अच्छा हाँ प्रमोद सर ओके थैंक यू चलो बाय बाय देन वी विल मीट टूमोरो वी विल मीट टूमोरो एक्जेक्टली एट टू ओ क्लॉक Uh, but you solve the submit the assignment and appear for the exam so i'm going to